Uh, but I guess I'll say, you know, we've had a really good off season. It's just, uh, it's nice to go through an off season and not have injuries. Uh, so we're able to progress whenever all your freshmen are eligible. Uh, that's always a good thing. So from, from the spring of, uh, of recovery was good for us. Gary was banged up a lot. Uh, and had a terrible ankle situation with a high ankle sprain. And Troy Copain played the last three months of the season with a with a groin tear that uh, we just didn't talk about. And uh, he showed unbelievable toughness to play through. He's a totally different guy. You see him every day. I mean, he, he would he'd be ready at game time. He'd, but uh, I think we shut him down for six weeks after our season, which was he didn't want to do that. But uh, once we did it. He's been building himself back up. Uh, and I guess I would start with him because I know everybody's going to ask about Kyle Washington, obviously, and uh, probably should because he's replacing a couple of big guys that graduated for us. And he's a tremendously talented guy. Everybody loves to talk about Jacob Evans, especially the way he ended the season last year in the St. Joe's game. And then obviously you have the, the, the newcomers. but. Uh, I'm just a big believer that the senior leadership is the key to college sports, team sports, especially at the amateur level. Uh, and for us, I, I think that uh, Kevin and Troy are the key to our season. Kevin's leadership uh, and toughness is something I've talked about. For, his toughness is something I've talked about for a long time, We're trying to make him be a leader and uh, be more, uh, just ha take more ownership in our team and our success level. Uh, and uh, probably been harder on him and Troy than I ever have. They saw a little bit, they, they, they got a little bit different pitch thrown at them this off season uh, with how hard I've been on them. And uh, we haven't had a lot of lovey-dovey talks, so. Uh, but they've responded. So uh, that being said, I, I think whatever happens with this team uh, is gonna start and stop with Troy Copain. Uh, that means he might score five points and have 10 assists and 10 rebounds some games. Uh, he's our high deflection guy always. Uh, he's our high minute guy. And I'm hoping for his sake, he will not score the points that SK did in his senior year, but I'm hoping he can take the jump that SK did into his senior year uh, to being one of the best players in the country. Uh, I believe in him and I, I think that uh, for all the, the, the pieces around him, obviously Gary Clark's probably the best glue guy in college basketball. But I think everything's going to start and stop with us with Troy uh, just because of all the minutes he's logged, all the big shots he's had to take in his career, the ups and downs he's had to go through uh, is going to allow him to have a big year because he, he's learned so much uh, about success and failure at this level and what it takes. So. Uh, really, really excited about him and Kevin being our senior leaders. Uh, I think that's that's the key is leadership. So, you know, when you talk to those guys, I'm sure they'll tell you I've been pretty hard on them and uh, trying to really get them to take ownership of what's going to happen with our basketball team. From every drill we run to every off-season conditioning thing we did, uh, really tried to put uh, put the onus on them to make sure our team is preparing it at the level that we want to play at. And uh, they talk a lot about trying to have a great year, so you have to have great preparation, but uh, you have to have great leadership. So I think uh, I'm really optimistic that they're ready for that. I think both of those guys really care, and they're, they've, they've seemed to embrace that role here early on. Yeah. I think it's, a, but at the same time, it's it's a, it, being a senior is just different. I mean, he's always had a lot of responsibility, but it's never really been his team. Uh, even though the last two years, we we asked him to score probably the last two years more than we'll need him to score this year. But uh, he was it was never the senior, uh, and uh, you know, returning first team All League player that he is now. Plus, he's you know he's still only 20 years old, even though he's a senior with uh, with uh, Eighth grade red shirting and uh, prep school and the things that go on now, he's the same age as some college freshmen. He really is. Uh, so you, 
for him, it's just chronological date of birth as well, getting to, getting to where he's old enough to lead a locker room full of 22 or 23-year-old guys at some point. At least now he's 20. He's not a teenager anymore. So, uh, and, and and same for you know, Kevin has more of an assertive personality. Uh, you know, his numbers aside, uh, I, he's he's got a t uh, I, and Kevin's been our toughest guy. In my mind, he's our toughest guy. I mean, he he made pound for pound. Uh, I, he he embodies what we try to believe in as far as how hard he plays. So I think it's 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 uh, more evolved for for Troy probably because he's not the he's not the uh, probably the personality that Kevin is. Kevin really he he's he's not afraid of anything. So it's as you saw when he made that shot against UConn in the uh, conference tournament. Oh, he's night and day. He's nowhere near the defender Octavius is. And I say that loving Kyle. Uh, Kyle's much better probably on the perimeter uh, with his defense. Post-defense will be the biggest fallout for us or fall off. And we'll have to do some things differently in the interior. Uh, where Octavius was a guy that because he blocked shots with both hands, he had very, uh, very good timing. Uh, you know, Corey was able to eat a lot of space. We're going to have to do some things differently on the interior with the way we do things. We didn't have to do a lot of post doubling. We may have to trap the post this year. That being said, I think we'll be able to extend our defense much more than we have the last few years. Uh, just because uh, our depth is, is probably much more relative and, and with, with Justin Jennifer in his second year, he's a different player completely. Jaron Cumberland's got tremendous talent. Uh, and I think Trey Scott's athleticism off the bench will be able to help us. But uh, Hopefully Kyle and, and, and Gary can get to a point where they're like Justin and Titus were as far as their ability to switch and us to change defenses more. Uh, we had to really devise our defense the last two years to keep Titus or to keep Octavius and Corey around the basket. They struggled against smaller spread teams if they had to get too far away from the rim. Uh, as you saw in the, the Tough loss we had to St. Joe in the NCAA tournament. It was a great game, but it was tough to play Corey. And their center is their best three-point shooter in the gym. Nowadays, the game has changed so much. And you'll see it with us on offense. Uh, our offense is so much more open than it was the last few years. Uh, and it's just the way, it's the way the basketball seems to be going. Uh, nobody, young kids in Ohio don't seem to grow anymore. Uh, that used to happen a lot when I was growing up. But... Uh, you know, it's just the, the three-point shot and the spread offense. And there's no such thing as a power forward. Now, now, now you, your power forward, you want him to be able to make threes and rebound. And you walk in, you, you walk in the gym today, Gary Clark will be standing there shooting threes. The best five. Yeah. <laughs> no, sir, it's too early for all that. You know, not, knock on wood, we get to the first game healthy. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty obvious you got returning all league guys and Troy and Gary. Jacob's probably there. You know, Kevin's a senior. Uh, you know, ho hopefully we can get Kyle to the point. I mess with Kyle because he, he reminds me so much of Justin when he was young or Kenyon Martin when he was young. They, they're so aggressive. Uh, he's like them and he, he just fouls too much. So I, I got to get him to a point where uh, he's not fouling on every other possession because you can't foul out in practice. So, uh, but the you know the usual suspects would be be pretty obvious you would think, but you never know. I, I don't I don't talk a whole lot about that. I I do think we're gonna Justin Jennifer is gonna be a factor for our team. Jaron Cumberland's gonna be a factor for our team. Quadri Moore is a different person. You'll see when he walks in here from A to Z. He he got he and I both have the same haircut now, uh, and he he's probably in as good a shape as Coach Davis. So, and that's that's a tough thing to be. But uh, I just think our depth is going to be much more of a factor this year. That's why I talk about Troy uh, having a great year. I think his percentages will go up because he won't have to carry so much of the load. I'm not going to have to pressure him into taking shots at when he's tired or trying to force the action too much. I know you wanted to play Justin more last year from the beginning, but how has he improved? Well, Justin, two things. His body, Jacob and Justin both, 
physically have changed their body. Their body fat's way down. You know, they've worked really hard with Mike Rayfelt in the offseason. They've done a tremendous job with him with getting their body fat down, their athleticism gets up, their conditioning gets up. The second thing to answer your question about Justin, the hardest thing for him was in high school, his junior and senior year, he shot the ball a lot and had to for his team to be successful. And then he got here and he felt that it was just a carryover, that that's, that was his job. Just to, that's just how he played. And what he's embraced, what I told him this summer, we're going to keep – he and I had a secret pact. We're going to keep in our scrimmages, in our, our weekly workouts, that, that uh, under our NCAA allowable hours, we did a lot of scrimmaging this summer, working on our offense. And all you need to worry about is if your team wins. That's how they judge point guards. That's how they judge quarterbacks. And that's what you are doesn't matter if you score or not you know you've got to make sure your team is winning and playing well because I know he wants playing time and that's how you get playing time as a guard especially as a point guard and he is not a combo he's a true point guard so I think he, he's really embraced that uh, he doesn't feel like he's got to come in the game and make a great pass or take a shot right away uh, and he's, it's calmed him down it's allowed him to play with a lot more poise and read the defense better uh, so I, I, I I think he's really learned what it's going to take for him to be a good college player. Coach, you always talk about this possible final last season. That was something we talked about a lot and trying to get that opportunity. What do you see when you look at this team from the outside? What do you see about them that you want to be aware of? Well, as long as they're wearing the, the C on their chest, I, they, they better have toughness. You know, the, we go to the tournament around here and have gone to it uh, with a lot of pride for six straight years. And it goes back a long way to Coach Huggins' era because of our toughness. We're no different than anybody else. And you, you can talk about our toughness or football team's toughness. If you don't have that, you're not winning. You're not even in the conversation. So the teams that are able to sustain success always have toughness, always have competitive toughness. Uh, then it becomes a matter of execution. So uh, that's just what we believe in the way we practice, the way we compete, what we stand for. And that's why you always win. And then how much you win is going to depend on your talent level and how much discipline and togetherness you have. So we just try to we build that year round in the way we train uh, in, the, in the weight room, in the way we condition outside, in the way we practice in the gym. Uh, so it would be no different this year uh, than any other year uh, since I've been trying, uh, since I took over back in 06 and trying to build the program. It's, you, you just you can't have success without it. It's, that's 75% of the deal. If you, if, if you don't have that, you're not in the conversation. Then you get to the last, that's how you get to the top 25, the remaining 25. Then it's going to come down to execution and talent. Coach, you never really know what you're going to get with a freshman big man until he gets on campus. How happy have you been with Nizier from what you've seen so far and, and what you think he's going to get? Well, I love his size and his his uh, conditioning and his competitive toughness. He doesn't get tired, uh, and he's got a great attitude. He's got a lot to learn. Uh, he, he had he because of his situation uh, in his home situation and being being adopted, he bounced around a little bit and uh, his had so many different coaches uh, and missed some coaching. I think it's uh, it's something that he's going to have to play through. But uh, his size is great, his conditioning is great, and his attitude is tremendous. Uh, defensively and rebounding-wise, he's way ahead of his, his offense. Uh, and that's, that's because he, he played with somebody that I can't talk about because he's still in high school. Uh, but he, he's played with some unbelievably high-ranked players. Uh, so he, didn't get a lot of, he did not get a lot of touches in high school or in AAU. He played with a lot of projected lottery picks. Um, which made him very good at rebounding because that's the only way he touched the ball. Uh, and that's by, by far the best thing he does right now is rebound the ball. Yeah, Kane uh, Broom is, a, is a, you guys, people talk about recruiting, it's recruiting season and uh, signing day is coming soon. People talk about all these rankings. Kane Broom is the is the poster child for why we all miss in recruiting and why the rankings don't matter. 
because when he walks in the gym, you're going to think that he might be on the golf team. Uh, and he he may weigh 160 if he comes in here wet. And I'm sure when I, we all saw him in AAU, people just wrote him off as soon as they looked at him. But what happens is then they actually play the game. And you have an ability to beat your man. You have an ability to score the ball. You have an ability to pass the ball and make people better. You have instincts that can't be taught in the game. And you're better than guys uh, that were recruited higher than you because of their size, power, athleticism. But you're a better basketball player. You're just – he was – and I, I don't remember because I did not see Kane coming out. Uh, Coach Savino tells me I did. So, obviously, I, if I did, I dismissed him quick based on his size, which I should never do to anybody. Uh, but, anyway, he, he, all you got to do is watch him play and you'll see quick. And he, he's, he makes your team better. You know, I've already it, – it's, it's tough knowing he can't play this year because he makes practice better because – he, he beats his man constantly. Uh, he finds the open man. He knows how, he just knows how to play basketball. And coaches, we always complain about that. And people probably, you know, Zach coaches just, nobody really understands what that means. But he has basketball instincts of a 35 year old that's been playing his whole life, that grew up in a gym. And he, he just does a lot of things you can't teach. He's got great quickness too. He's very, de he's deceptively, uh, Bigger than he is going at the rim, he knows how to finish on bigger people. I mean, he really can, he'll frustrate guys in the way he can avoid getting his shot blocked as a finisher. Uh, he's he's we're really excited about what he's going to be able to bring to the table for us. Obviously, with Troy and Kevin graduating too this past or this coming year. Well, Jaron, uh, I think he he he'd probably be on the same path as a, you know, as Jacob was. I mean, he's that kind of player. Uh, he, he, I would say he's a better three-point shooter than Jacob as a freshman. Uh, pro I, I, I hope I'm wrong in this. Probably not the defender. Not, not because of lack of effort. I think he's, he's. We got to work on Jaron's lateral quickness. Is something he's got to work on. Uh, but his instincts are great, and uh, it's made for a, a lot more flowing offensive practices when you add guys that know how to play the game, know when to shoot, when to pass, how to space the floor like Kane Broom and Jaron Cumberland. Uh, a, the thing about it, like Kane, Jaron knows how to play. And Jaron grew up in a basketball family, playing with his dad, his uncle, and older guys his whole life. And then he played for Mike Noska at Wilmington, who teaches motion offense uh, and really tries to teach his guys how to play. I think, and it's, I bring that up because in practice, it's, it's very, very evident when you get a guy who has had really good high school coaching and maybe who has not. And Jaron, had, he's, had, he's, he's had great basketball upbringing, but he's also had really good coaching. Most freshmen do two things that stop them from playing. They turn it over and they take bad shots. He does neither. He doesn't take bad shots and he doesn't turn the ball over. He plays with great pace. His strength probably helps him with that. Uh, the defensive end is going to be the biggest challenge for, for Jaron Cumberland this year. Uh, very good passer, very, very good passer, and willing passer. You know, I, J Jaron just plays the game. He knows it doesn't matter who scores. And he knows enough basketball to know that people are going to be more impressed with his pass if that was the right play than just trying to score points per game. You know, he, he's had games with 40. I mean, he, you know, he went through that last year. He wanted to win the state championship. He didn't care how many points he got. So he scored so many in high school that it's not a big deal for him. You know, I, I don't. He doesn't worry about scoring. I mean, he's he's confident enough to know that'll that that'll happen for him. He's just got a great understanding of the game. Uh, his only problem is the defensive end. It's but that's most young kids. Jacob was an aberration. He was the best freshman defender I've ever had. No, normal, normal. You know, but he has instincts, so he does make up for it because he he can block shots. Uh, that because of his size and his athleticism. So because of that, he, he's able to recover from some of his footwork mistakes or his positioning mistakes. You've talked over the years about probably starting with Kevin and Troy, bringing in more basketball IQ, more guys that, that know how to play the game. Is this a roster that's designed to that where you think you've, you've got guys that yeah. you know how to play for the most part? We've tried. 
you know, we've really tried to get to a point. To, to be a good offensive team, guys need to know when to shoot, when to pass, when to cut, when to screen. Uh, and then obviously have the ability to finish around the rim and make open shots. I mean, it's as simple as just putting the ball in the basket. Uh, I just think because of our the configuration of this team, we don't not having the big guys in the low post that we that really can't do anything else. Uh, our options offensively are a lot better with this team because Gary and Kyle, Quadri and Trey, them guys, oh, they can all make open shots. It's going to allow us to spread the floor more. It's going to allow Troy Copain to post up more, Jacob Evans to post up more, and it's going to. I think it's really going to help Kevin Johnson because the more motion we have, he's really, really effective in the motion offense. He's a great cutter. He's a great screener. He's a great catch and shoot guy. Uh, I, I think the style of offense we're playing is going to really help his offense, uh, and, and it just gives you more options as a coach. So, but uh, when that ball goes in the basket. You know, you, you look a lot smarter. I even feel a little taller. Yeah, because it's just Kyle, you know, guys that are going to play for us, like Trey Scott, Kyle Washington, Jaron Cumberland, uh, haven't played with our jersey on in our system to the level of defense that we're used to playing. You know, we, we try to uh, obviously take a lot of pride in not giving away anything to our opponent. And, uh, you know, schematically, that all is going to take time. But uh, just getting a guy to be what we call solid, where we can count on you to not foul in a, in a crucial situation. Make the guy make a shot. Also, don't let the guy do what he's you, sh you know he's going to do. You know, I mean, defense is not – people talk about it like uh, like we're doing something tricky. All we really try to do is play smart and with great effort. But smart is the biggest, biggest part of it. Uh, you know, if you just don't let people do what they want to do, teams struggle to score. Because the guys that can do everything, they don't last in college basketball anymore. Those guys are only here for one year. So there's a lot of very good players that can maybe shoot and go right. Maybe a guy's a good passer. There's very few guys that do it all in college basketball. Uh, and with your size and athleticism, if you play smart, and you play as a team, you, you can have a great defensive team if you're committed to that. So, but I would say that, that no doubt that to me that I'm more concerned with that uh, than our offense. I'm much more concerned uh, with our defense with this team, uh, primarily because of Kyle and Trey and Jaron getting them up to speed. You got to ask a question, KB. You should come in here with your golf outfit on, trying to rub it in. It's unbelievable. That's the one thing that's good and bad about college basketball. The, the players stay young as you get older, so it helps you stay young. Uh, so, uh, you know, it keeps the excitement going. Because, you know, you, you start as you get on, this will be my 14th year as a head coach. You know, I look at guys that I'm, I obviously know, whether it's Coach Huggins or Coach Patino, uh, or guys even older than them. I, I, I'm starting to understand why they still coach because the, 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 every season's new. You have a new team, guys graduate. There's always a, a new young guy to help grow up, help become a better player. Uh, it's, it, that's probably the, the, the fun part of it for us. It keeps you fresh, no doubt about it. It's tough, you know, that's what makes it hard though because like a guy like when you, when you teach guys how to be the ultimate winners like a Justin Jackson, he's gone. You know, by the time you get a guy to where, you know, where Troy and Kevin are, to where they can run your practice, you, make, you put them on different teams and they can run their team, they're going to be gone. Uh, and they make sure everybody's doing every drill right and going hard, then they're gone. you got to start all over again. But, uh, you know, I think that, that's the fun of it, though, because then you get to see somebody else evolve into that role. Uh, so just fortunate to be here. Appreciate everybody coming out.